Hey guys, Thunder E here, and today we're going to be talking about one laptop that really has taken things by storm this year. I'm talking about the Asus Zephyrus G14. Now, the G14 is an incredible piece of hardware. We've seen a few videos out there. If you haven't seen Linus's video with his breakdown on that, definitely check it out because he gives some really good in-depth look at what this device can actually do. Now, I'm gonna talk about it from my perspective as a gamer and the games I like to play. But this probably is one of the best 14 inch or even 15 inch laptops out there, period, because of what it gives you in terms of performance and balance side by side. So looking at the specs, comes in either white or black. Um, I like the look, it's slim, it's slick, simplistic. It's also lightweight, so something when you carry around with you, even if you're going, if you're going to say um, a coffee shop or you're working at home or going to work, you can easily carry this around. It's got enough ports as well. You've got a DC port for power, you've got a HDMI port, you've got a USB type C port, and then you've got a headphone jack all on the left hand side. On the right hand side, you do have two USB-A ports, 3.0, and a USB Type-C port as well. So you have that. There is no Thunderbolt just because it's running an AMD processor, but that processor is all about the performance. And boy, does this thing really kick it. It is the brand new 4000 series, the 4900 HS from AMD. And this thing is a beast. Like just looking at the Cinebank R20 scores, it comes right underneath the Threadripper 1950X. This is an eight core laptop CPU, by the way. Just think about it. Just think about that kind of performance you're getting from there. Now this is paired with a GTX 2060 uh, Max-Q, which I think is probably where some of the downsides in performance in terms of gaming is what you'll see. But that being said though, it comes with a massive battery in there giving you 10 hours of battery life. Yes, that's what they claim. And honestly, they hit that mark. The reason I say that is because this is something where you can game fully and get some really great performance, but also you can use this for 10 hours of just use. I mean, it's absolutely amazing that you can spend time and use it that way. Plus it charges via USB type C also, not while you're gaming, you can't use that. But if you're at a coffee shop, you forgot your charger, you lost your charger, take your phone charger, use it. I like that thinking. And to me, that is where this stands out. Now, in terms of gaming, which is what we care about here, uh, this performs well. So starting off with Tomb Raider, running the benchmarks of the game on this laptop, we started at ultra settings to see how well it do at the max settings, because of course we've heard how good this laptop is in terms of performance. And we got about 88 frames per second on average on the benchmark, which is actually pretty good. 120 hertz display, uh, you know, highest performance level, that's nice. Now, how about on high? And high, we eked out an extra two, you know, frames per second, it's average 90 or so. So not too much. And I think some of that limitation comes from the fact that the GPU is a 2060 uh, Max-Q. So, you know, that's just what it is. Now, playing Call of Duty Warzone, ran all the updates, updated my drivers to the game drivers, and this thing performed well, up to 100 frames per second, 100 and something frames per second in some spots, 90, between 80 and 90 on average. Uh, it ran really smooth and really well. I like the performance, lack of slowdowns from this device altogether. Now, the one thing you know is that this thing runs loud and it runs super hot because uh, the performance this processor gives is really great, but the cooling is something that I would like to see improvements. Now, granted, there are vents everywhere, and when you look at it in the internals, you can see the cool piping everywhere to ensure that this thing stays as cool as possible. But while even gaming, though, I mean, it runs up a temperature, like 120, maybe 124, depending on how long I play, and that's something that you just have to understand you're gonna get with this uh, device. So when you open up the laptop and we look inside, uh, it's got a nice touchpad, nothing too crazy about that. The keyboard layout is good. It feels a little bit soft at first, it takes some getting used to, but I do like the keyboard as well. And Matthew Munoz will like this. The stickers are all aligned quite properly. Now, on top of uh, the keyboard roll, you do have a uh, volume down, volume up button, a mic button, as well as a 
ROG button, which opens up the ROG software app, which allows you to customize, of course, uh, the performance of this laptop with ease by just hitting the button. You can go and change from Windows to silent to performance to turbo. You can look at uh, what your temperatures are doing. Uh, CPU temperature didn't go past 90 uh, in just peak performance for me, so that's something to take note. I do like that quite well. I also like the way the vents uh, show up on the back of the device and on the side. Try to cool it as much as possible. Again, you're not gonna hear much while you're gaming because uh, the speakers get drowned out with, of course, the cooling, so you might definitely have to use a headset. Uh, the other thing also to know that it does have Dolby Atmos, so when you're listening to music or video, they sound pretty good. But I digress. Well, the Xperia 1 Mark II is a unique device. It comes in with a 21 by 9 aspect. So yeah, there are a lot of things to like over this laptop, but there are some things that I don't necessarily like. For instance, the GTX 2060 Max Q is the only graphics card you can do with it, use with it, which is why I would have liked to see something like a 2070 or even a 2080 as well, which would definitely showcase the full performance range you're getting. Uh, also, it only comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM. You can expand it, but there's only one DIMM slot to expand, so be very careful of how you do that. Plus, uh, you also have the fact that it doesn't have a webcam. Now, I am a proponent of not having a webcam on a gaming laptop, I think it's fine, but today's day and age, with everything that's been going on, it's really important to have that, and that's something that is definitely needed, so that's a little bit of a negative on there. But I think overall, when you think about it compared to any other gaming laptop, this is the only gaming laptop that lasts for 10 hours in terms of battery life. Only gaming laptop uh, that also can charge with a USB Type-C port. This is the only gaming laptop performance-wise in the 14-inch or even 15-inch category that the, uh, the AMD 4900HS does a fantastic job. And top it all off, it's priced at $1,499. It is probably the most cost-effective, powerful gaming laptop. So for me, I wanna see more AMD uh, processors in gaming laptops, especially with this kind of delivery option that they've given. Uh, you know, more from ASUS, I'd love to see that from the other manufacturers as well. I think this is a great starting point. And if you're looking for a laptop that games, but also will serve all your needs for a long time. I use, I talk about this with laptops a, a lot, and usually from the perspective of something that's not really a gaming laptop to give you gaming performance, this machine is it. So if you guys have any questions or any comments about the ASUS Zephyrus G14, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.